world religious scriptures. Let's welcome Brother Farik Nai to speak on the topic Muhammad peace be upon him in the various world religious scriptures. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi allazina astafa amma ba'd Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu wa ba'd Fa inna khayra alhadithi kitabullah wa khayrul hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharrul umuri muhdatsatuha wa kullu muhdatsatin bid'ah wa kullu bid'atin dalalah وكل ضلالة في النار الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وقاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليم رب شوه لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي. My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa taala of Almighty God be upon all of you. The topic of my talk is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the various world religious scriptures. Many people they have a misconception that Islam is a new religion and it came into existence 1400 years ago. And Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him he was the founder of this religion. But in fact Islam is there since time immemorial. since man set foot on this earth and prophet muhammad peace be upon him he is not the founder of this religion but he's the last and final messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of almighty god who was sent for the whole of humanity allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious quran in surah fatir chapter number 35 verse number 24 wa in min umma illa khala fiha nadhir and there is not a nation to whom we have not sent a warner or a guide allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious quran in surah rad chapter number 13 verse number 7 wa likulli qaumin had and to each people we have sent a guide by name 25 prophets are mentioned in the glorious quran for example adam noah abraham moses jesus muhammad peace be upon them all by name 25 prophets are mentioned in the glorious quran but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the glorious quran in surah nisa chapter number 4 verse number 164 and surah ghafir chapter number 40 verse number 78 wa rusulan qad qasasnahum alayka min qabl wa rusulan lam naqsasum alayk of messengers some whose stories we have related to thee and some whose stories we have not related to thee that means only some stories of the prophets they are mentioned in the glorious quran others are not mentioned and our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that there were 12400000 prophets sent on the face of the earth but all the prophets before the last and final messenger prophet muhammad peace be upon him they were only sent for their people and the message which they proclaimed was in totality for a particular time period for example jesus christ peace be upon him he was only sent for the bani israel only for the jews allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious quran in surah ali imran chapter number 3 verse number 49 and surah saf chapter number 61 verse number 6 wa rasulan ila bani israel and a messenger to the children of israel a similar message is mentioned in the bible It is mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number ten, verse number five and six. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, tells his apostles, "Go ye not in the way of the Gentiles." Who are the Gentiles? The Gentiles are the non-Jews, the Hindus, the Muslims. 
and enter ye not into the city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Further it is mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 15, verse number 24, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I have not been sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was only sent for the Bani Israel, only for the Jews, only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Ahzab, chapter number 33, verse number 40, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحْدٍ مِّن رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَوَتَ مَنْ نَبِيِّينَ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْنَ عَلِيمًا that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is not the father of any of you men, but he's the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. And Allah has full knowledge of all things. Since Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was the last and final messenger. He was not sent only for the Muslims or only for the Arabs, but he was sent for the whole of humanity. And it is mentioned in the glorious Quran in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 107. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةِ الْعَالَمِينَ That we have sent thee not, but as a mercy to all the worlds, as a mercy to all the creatures, as a mercy to the whole of humanity. A similar message is mentioned in the glorious Quran in Surah Sabah, chapter number 34, verse number 28. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ That we have sent thee not, but as a universal messenger, giving glad tidings and warning them. But most of them did not know. Since Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was the last and final messenger. He was not sent only for the Muslims or only for the Arabs, but he was sent for the whole of humanity. And we Muslims, we believe that the glorious Quran, it is the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We believe that the glorious Quran, it is the word of God. Whatever the glorious Quran says, we believe in it. That's the reason we believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for the non-Muslims, in order to prove to the non-Muslims that the Qur'an is the word of God, that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is the last and final messenger, I will take the help of one verse of the glorious Qur'an, which I consider the master key for doing da'wah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Qur'an, in Surah Ali Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64. تَعَالَوْا إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءٍ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ Come to common terms, as between us and you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَعَالَوْا إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءٍ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ Come to common terms, as between us and you. Let's analyze Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the various world religious scriptures. So if the followers, they consider the scripture to be the word of God, and if Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is prophesied in the scriptures, so they will believe in that. First we'll discuss Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Hindu scriptures. The Hindu scriptures it is divided into two types, the Shruti and the Smithi. The Shruti is that which is revealed, that which is understood, that which is heard. And the Hindu scholars, they believe that the Shruti, it is the word of Almighty God. And it is divided into two parts, the Vedas and the Upanishads. The Sanskrit word Veda is derived from the root word Vid, which means knowledge par excellence. And there are four Vedas, Rig Ved, Yajur Ved, Samu Ved and Atharva Ved. Oh, when exactly what these Vedas reveal is not known. But according to Dayanand Saraswati, who is the founder of the Arya Samaj, he says that these Vedas are 1310 million years old. Whereas most of the Hindu scholars, they believe that these Vedas are 4,000 years old. In which part was it revealed? Who was the first person who received it is not known. Though all these ambiguities are there, yet it is considered as a word of God and it is the most authentic 
among the Hindu scriptures and it is the highest in authority among the Hindu scriptures. The next in authority comes the Upanishad. The word Upanishad is derived from the root word Upa which means near, Ni which means down and Shad which means sitting. Therefore Upanishad means sitting down near. It refers to the pupils and the students sitting down near the teacher. Upanishad also means knowledge which removes ignorance. There are more than 200 Upanishads, whereas the Indian culture, it gives a figure of 108. Some are picked up as 10, some as 12, and Sri Radha Krishnan, he has picked up 18 and has written a book, The Principal Upanishads. The next type of Hindu scriptures is the Smriti. Smriti means that which is remembered, it means memory. The Hindu scholars, they believe that the Shrutis are higher than the Smriti. They also believe that Smriti, it is written by human beings, by Rishis. Smriti, it is also called as Dharma Shastra, because it shows how a life should be led by individual, by a community and by a society. The most important among the Smriti is the Purana. Purana means ancient. It talks about the ancient deities, the ancient creation of the universe. And Maharishi Vyas has compiled it into 80 voluminous parts. The most important among the Puranas is the Bhavishya Purana. Bhavishya which talks about the future. It is mentioned in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Ajay 3, Shlokas 5 to 8 that a Malik Cha will come along with his companions from the sandy desert. His name will be Muhammad. And Raja Boj will welcome him and address him and say that, O oh, pride of humankind, you have created a great force in order to fight against the evil people. This prophecy of Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Ajay 3, Shlokas 5 to 8, refers to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It says that a Malikcha will come from the sandy desert. Malikcha is Sanskrit. If translated, it means a foreigner. And it says that he will come from a Marusthal. Marusthal means a sandy desert. Further, it says that Raja Boj will welcome him and address him and say that, O oh, pride of humankind, you have created a great force. And we know our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was the pride of humankind. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Qalam, chapter number 68, verse number 4, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Verily, you are in the highest standards of character. A similar message is repeated in the glorious Quran, in Surah Ahzab, chapter number 33, verse number 21. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةُ الْحَسَنَةِ Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, you have a beautiful pattern of behavior. Further, it says that He shall create a great force in order to fight against the evil people. And we know that was done by our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Many people say, that Raja Boj was in the 11th century, 500 years after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. They failed to realize, like how the monarchs of Egypt, there was not only one pharaoh, there were many pharaohs. Similarly, the kings of Rome, there was not only one Caesar, there were many Caesars. And in India, to a king the title is given Boj. So, there is not only one Raja Boj, there are many Raja Boj. And the Raja Boj that is being addressed here, he is not the Raja Boj of the 11th century. He is much before that. It is mentioned in Bhavishya Purada, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Ajay 3, Shlokas 10 to 27. That his name will be Muhammad. And later on, an angel comes to Raja Boj and tells him, the followers, they shall be circumcised. They shall not have a tail on the head, that is the shendi. They shall grow a beard. They shall create a revolution. They shall give the call for prayer, that is the adhan. 
They shall eat all lawful things, but they shall not eat the flesh of swine. They shall not be purified by fruits, vegetables and herbs, but they shall be purified by warfare. They shall be called as Musalman. This prophecy of Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adye 3, Shlokas 10 to 27 refers to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It says, the followers, they shall be circumcised. They shall not have a tail on the head, that's the shendi. They shall give the call for prayer, that is the adhan. They shall grow the beard. They shall create a revolution. They shall eat all lawful things, but they shall not eat the flesh of swine. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Lord's Quran, in no less than four different places, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 173, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 3, in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 145, and in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 115, عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَ تُوَدَّمُ وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَمَا أُحِلَّ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ بِي Forbidden for your food are dead meat, blood, flesh of swine, and any food on which any other name besides Allah's name has been taken. These four types of food are prohibited for us Muslims. Furthermore, it says that he shall not be purified by fruits, vegetables and shrubs, but he shall be purified by warfare. And when our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he took part in many battles in self-defense. And further it says that they shall be called Musalman. So these prophecies befit no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Furthermore, it is mentioned in Bhavashya Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 1, Adyay 3, Shlokas 21 to 23. Corruption and persecution are in the seven sacred cities of Kashi. The followers of Malik Chadharm, they shall be wise and brave people. And all good qualities will be found in the Musalman. Whereas all wise have accumulated in the land of the Aryans. Knowing all these facts, O Muni, glorify thy Lord. It is mentioned in Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 127, mantra number 1 to 14. It is called as Kuntap Suktas, which means hidden glands in the abdomen. It also means free from misery. It also means peace that is similar to Islam. It refers to the center of the earth, that's Makkah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, Isra Ali Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 96. Inna awwala bayt wudhi ala nath, lalladhi bi bakkata mubarakah. The first house that was appointed for men was that at Bakkah. So Bakkah is another name of Makkah. Time does not permit me to discuss all the 14 mantras, but I will touch upon the first four mantras. Mantra number one says that he will be Narashansa, he will be Kaurama. Mantra number two, he will be a camel riding Rishi. Mantra number three, he will be a Mama Rishi. Mantra number four, he will be Vaishesh Reb. Mantra number one, that he will be Narashansa. The word Narashansa comes from the root word Nar which means human being or man. And shansa comes from the word prashansa, which means praiseworthy, which in Arabic is Muhammad, which is the name of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Furthermore, it says that he shall be kaurama. Kaurama means prince of peace. It also means emigrant. And we know our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he migrated from Makkah to Medina and he was an emigrant. Furthermore, it says that he shall be protected from 60,090 enemies. And we know the population of Makkah was approximately 60,000. Mantra number two, that he will be a camel riding Rishi. And no Indian, nor a Brahmin, according to Manasmati, chapter number 11, verse number 202, which says that no Brahmin will ride a camel or an ass. So it refers to a foreigner. And it refers to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Mantra number 3, that he will be a Mama Rishi or a Maharishi. 
And sometimes he is referred to as Muhammad. Mantra number four, that he will be a rib. Rib means one who praises, which in Arabic is Ahmad, which is another name of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is mentioned in Atharawa Ved, book number 20, hymn number 21, mantra number six, that he shall win the battle without fighting. He shall be protected from 10,000 enemies. He shall be Karu. Now Karu in Sanskrit means one who praises, which in Arabic is Ahmad, which is another name of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It says that he will win the battle without fighting. And when our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he won the battle of Ahzab without fighting. And it says he will have 10,000 enemies. Furthermore, it is mentioned in Atharwa Ved, book number 20, hymn number 21, mantra number 7, that Almighty God will overthrow 20 kings and he will protect the Abandu from 60,099 enemies. Now, Abandu in Sanskrit means an orphan. And the population of Makkah was approximately 60,000. Furthermore, we know in Makkah, there were 20 chieftains. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he won over all of them. Furthermore, it is mentioned in Rigved, book number 1, hymn number 53, mantra number 9. The word is Shushrama. Shushrama means praiseworthy, which in Arabic is Muhammad, which is the name of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Furthermore, it is mentioned in Agni, mantra number 64 that he will not be breastfed by his mother, but he will be breastfed by someone else. And when our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was breastfed by Bibi Halima. May Allah be pleased with her. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he's prophesied as Ahmad in several places. Uttar Chik, Mantra number 1500, Indra chapter number 2, verse number 152, Yajurve chapter number 31, verse number 18, Rigved book number 8, hymn number 6, Mantra number 10, Atharwa Ved book number 8, hymn number 5, Mantra number 16, Atharwa Ved book number 20, hymn number 126, Mantra number 14. He's prophesied as Narachansa in several places. Narachansa, as I mentioned earlier, Nar, which means human being or man, and Shansa comes from Prashansa, which means praiseworthy which in Arabic is Muhammad, which is the name of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's prophesied as Narashansa in several places. In Rigved, book number 1, hymn number 13, mantra number 3. Rigved, book number 1, hymn number 18, mantra number 9. Rigved, book number 1, hymn number 106, mantra number 4. Rigved, book number 1, hymn number 142, mantra number 3. Rigved, book number 2, hymn number 3, mantra number 2. Rigved, book number 5, hymn number 5, mantra number 2. Rigved, book number 7, hymn number 2, mantra number 2. Rigved, book number 10, hymn number 64, mantra number 3. Rigved, book number 10, hymn number 182, mantra number 2. Yajurve chapter number 20, verse number 37. Yajurve chapter number 20, verse number 57. Yajurve chapter number 21, verse number 31. Yajurve chapter number 21, verse number 55. Yajurve chapter number 28, verse number 2. Yajurve chapter number 28, verse number 19. Yajurve chapter number 28, verse number 42. You can go on and on giving only references where Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is prophesied in the Hindu scriptures. Due to the time limitation, I will only discuss one more prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's called as Kalki Autar. It's mentioned in Bhagavad Purana, Khanda 12, Adi 2, Shlokas 18 to 20. In the house of Vishnu Yas, the noble soul Brahmin, the chief of the village of Sambala, Kalki will be born. And he shall have eight supernatural qualities. He shall travel on a white horse and carry the sword in the right hand. It's mentioned in Bhagavad Purana, Khanda 1, Adi 3, Mantra 25. That in Kalyug, where kings will be like robbers, Kalki will be born. It is mentioned in Kalki Purana, chapter number 2, verse number 4. That in the house of Vishnu Yas, the noble soul Brahmin, the chief of the village of Sambala, Kalki will be born. It is mentioned in Kalki Purana, chapter number 2, verse number 5. That he will be helped by four companions to fight against the evil people. It is mentioned in Kalki Purana, chapter number 2, verse number 7, that he will be helped by the iftars or angels on the battlefield. It is mentioned in Kalki Purana, chapter number 2, verse number 11, that in the house of Vishnu Yas, he will be born in the womb of Sumati. 
It is mentioned in Kalki Purana, chapter number 2, verse number 15, that he will be born on the 12th day of the month of Madhav. So this was in brief regarding Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, prophesied in the Kalki Autar. Let's discuss these few points in brief. Point number one, his father will be Vishnu Yas. Vishnu means God and Yas means servant. Therefore, Vishnu Yas means servant of God. So, in Arabic, it is Abdullah, which is the name of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's father. Point number two, he will be born in the womb of Sumati. His mother will be Sumati. Sumati means peace and serenity, which in Arabic is Amina, which is the name of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's mother. Further, it says that he will be born in the village of Sambala. Sambala means a place of peace and serenity which in Arabic is Makkah, which is also called as Darul Aman, which is the house of peace. Furthermore, it says that he shall be born in the house of the chief of the village of Sambala. And in our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was born in the house of the chief of Makkah. Furthermore, it says he will be born on the twelfth day of the month of Madhav. And in our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was born on the twelfth Rabbul Awwal. Further it says that he shall be the last Rishi. He shall be the Antim Rishi. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Ahzab, chapter number 33, verse number 40, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحْدٍ مِّن رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَاكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَوَاتَبَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْدِ عَلِيمًا That Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is not the father of any of you men, but he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. And Allah has full knowledge of all things. Further it says, that the first revelation he will get at night. And we know the first revelation our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he got in jabl -e nur in ghar -e hira And when Archangel Gabriel came to him and said, Iqra, read, he said, Ma ana biqari, I am not learned. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Dukhan, chapter number 44, verse number 2 and 3, and Surah Qadr, Chapter number 97, verse number 1. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. Verily, we have revealed it in the night of power. It says further that he shall have eight supernatural qualities. And the eight qualities are self-control, wisdom, respected lineage, revealed knowledge, gratefulness, valor, measured speech, and utmost charity. And Alhamdulillah, all these qualities were found in our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Furthermore, it says that he shall be a universal messenger. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, Isra Saba, chapter number 34, verse number 28, arsalnaka illa kafatan linnas, bashira wa nadira, wa lakinna aktara nasi la ya'lamoon. That we have sent thee not, but as a universal messenger, giving glad tidings and warning them. But most of them did not know. Furthermore, it says, that he shall travel on a white horse and carry the sword in his white hand. And in our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he went for Miraj, he traveled on the white horse, that is a barak, and he even carried the sword in his right hand. Furthermore, it says that he shall guide the ignorant people from darkness to light. And we know during the Ayyamul Jahiliyyah, in the days of ignorance, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he guided the ignorant Makkins from darkness to light. Further, it says that he shall be helped by four companions to fight against the evil people. And the four companions are Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Usman Ghadi, and Hazrat Ali. May Allah be pleased with them all. Further, it says that he shall be helped by the iftars and angels in the battlefield. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Ali Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 123 to 125. And Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 8, and died. That he was helped by angels in the battle of Badr. So these prophecies of Kalki Autar befit no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Let's discuss Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Parsi scriptures. Parsism is also called as Zoroastrianism. And the followers, they are called as fire worshippers. It was founded by Zoroaster in the land of Persia two and a half thousand years ago. 
the holy scriptures for the Parsis or the Zorast is the Dasatir and the Avesta. The Dasatir is divided into two parts, the Kurda Dasatir and the Kalan Dasatir. Whereas the Avesta is also divided into two parts, the Kurda Avesta and the Kalan Avesta, which is also called as Zain or Mahazain. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is prophesied several times in Avesta. It is mentioned in Parvadin Yasht, chapter number 28, verse number 129, that he will be victorious, he will be Shoshyan, he will be Astarit Arita. Now Shoshyan, according to the Hastening Encyclopedia, it means praiseworthy, which in Arabic is Muhammad, which is the name of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Furthermore, it says, that he shall be Astarit Arita. Now Astarit Arita means one who praises, which in Arabic is Ahmad, which is another name of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Furthermore, it is mentioned in Zamiyad Yasht, chapter number 16, verse number 95, that the friends of Astarit Arita, they shall come, and they shall be well-speaking, well-thinking, well-doing people, and they shall not utter a word of falsehood. This is referring to the Sahabas. That's the companions, that they shall be well-speaking, well-thinking, well-doing people, and they shall not utter a word of falsehood. And in the Sahabas, they were, mashallah, truthful. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is prophesied even in the Dasatir. The word Dasatir is derived from the root word Das, which means ten, and Atir, which means part. Therefore, the Satir is a book containing ten parts. The plural of the Satir is the Stur. It's mentioned in the Satir that when the Parsis will forsake their religion, when the Zoras will forsake their religion, a man will emerge from the sandy desert. His followers will subjugate the arrogant Persians. He shall be a mercy for humankind. He shall not worship the fire in the temple, but he shall pray in the direction of the house of Ibrahim, which will be free from idols. He shall do miraculous things. Furthermore, it is mentioned in Bunda Hish, chapter number 30, verse number 6 to 27, that he will be the last messenger. He will be Shoshyan. Shoshyan, as I mentioned earlier, according to the hastening encyclopedia, it means praiseworthy, which in Arabic, is Muhammad, which is the name of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these prophecies befit no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Let's discuss Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in the Buddha scriptures. It says that another Maitreya will come, another Buddha will come, and he shall be the supreme one. He shall be the enlightened one, the one endowed with knowledge and wisdom. He shall have auspicious knowledge and wisdom. And his religion will be glorious at its beginning, glorious at its climax, and glorious at its end. And he shall have thousands of disciples, as I have hundreds of disciples. Furthermore, it is mentioned in the sacred scriptures of the East, volume 35, page number 225. He will have such and such qualities, and he will be a leader of thousands of men as I am a leader of hundreds of men. Furthermore, it is mentioned in the Gospel of Buddha, page number 217 and 218. Ananda asked Buddha that, O oh, blessed one, when you go, who will guide us? So Buddha replies and says, that I am not the only Buddha. There will be another Buddha to come. There will be another Maitreya to come. And he shall be the supreme one. He shall be the one endowed with knowledge and wisdom. His religion will be glorious at its beginning, glorious at its climax, and glorious at its end. Ananda further asked Buddha, that how will we recognize him? So Buddha replies and says, that he shall be loving, he shall be kind, he shall be compassionate. And an equivalent word for this in Arabic is Rahmah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, verse number 107, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةِ الْعَالَمِينَ that we have sent thee not, but as a mercy to all the worlds, as a mercy to all the creatures, as a mercy to the whole of humanity. The word Rahmah and its derivatives are mentioned in the glorious Quran no less than 409 times. 
and every surah, every chapter of the glorious Quran begins with the formula, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Except Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9. Furthermore, it is mentioned in the sacred scriptures of the East, volume 11, page number 36. Mahapari Nibbana Sutta, chapter number 2, verse number 32. That there will be no esoteric, no esoteric. And Buddha says that you should propagate everything of the religion. You should not hide anything of the religion. And we know our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he preached everything of the religion. He did not hide a single thing from the people. And he told the disciples that the Sahabas to preach everything of the religion. Furthermore, it is mentioned in the sacred scriptures of the East, volume 11, page number 97, Mahapari Nibbana Sutta, chapter number 5, Verse number 36, that how Buddha had a servitor by the name of Ananda. Similarly, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will have a servitor by the name of Anas radiallahu anhu, the son of Malik radiallahu anhu. And when a mad elephant rushed at Buddha, Ananda stood by Buddha. Similarly, at the age of 11, Hadar Anas may Allah be pleased with him, during the battle of Uhud, he stood by our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He stood by our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in times of hardship and in times of safety. And at the age of 16, during the battle of Hunayn, he stood by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the archers had surrounded our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he can very well be compared with Ananda when a mad elephant rushed at Buddha and Ananda stood by Buddha. So this is the fulfillment of the servitor. And it is also the fulfillment of the Maitriya. Furthermore, it is mentioned in the Gospel of Buddha, page number 214. It talks that the Maitriya to come, he shall have six qualities. And the six qualities are, he will get the first enlightenment at night. He will become bright once he gets enlightenment. He will die a natural death. He will die at night. Once he dies, he will become bright. And once he dies, he will never be seen in bodily form again in this earth. The first one is that he will get enlightenment at night. The first enlightenment. And we you know our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first revelation he got in jabl -e nur in ghar -e hira when Archangel Gabriel came and said to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Iqra, read. He said, Ma ana biqari, I'm not knowledged. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Dukhan, chapter number 44, verse number 2 and 3, and Surah Qadr, chapter number 97, verse number 1. Inna anzallahu fi laylatul qadr. Verily, we have revealed it in the night of power. Further, it says that he will become bright once he gets enlightenment. And we know our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he became bright once he got enlightenment. Further, it says that he will die a natural death. And we know our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he died a natural death. Further, it says that he will die at night. And the hadith of Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, she said that they did not have oil in the lamp, so she borrowed the oil from the neighbor, indicating that it was night. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died. Further, it says that he will become bright once he dies. And the hadith of Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, she said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he looked bright when he died. And the last is that once he dies, he will never be seen in bodily form again. And now beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was buried in Medina. And he was never seen in bodily form again in this earth. So these prophecies, they befit no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Furthermore, it is mentioned in the sacred scriptures of the East, volume 10, page number 68, that the Tata Ghatas, they shall be the only preachers. They shall be the only people who will preach their religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Ghashia, chapter number 88, verse number 21, فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُسَيْتِرْ Your job is to convey. Giving hidayah, it is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Further, it is mentioned in the sacred scriptures of the East, volume 10, page number 67. 
that your good deeds, your righteous deeds are responsible for you to enter paradise. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Asr, chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3, Wala Asr, by time, inna insana lafi khusr, verily man is in a state of loss. Illa ladheena amanu, except for those who believe, wa aminu salihat, and righteous deeds, wa tuwa sabil haq, wa tuwa sabil sabr, and exhort people towards truth, and exhort people towards patience and perseverance. It says that this Maitreya who will come, he shall be kind, he shall be gentle, he shall be a mercy for humankind. So these prophecies befit no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Let's discuss Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Jewish and the Christian scriptures. The Bible is divided into two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament contains the stories before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And the New Testament contains the lifetime of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. The Catholics, they believe in 73 books. Whereas the Protestants, they have thrown out 7 books as apocrypha, that is doubtful. And they only believe in 66 books. First we'll discuss Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Jewish scriptures. It's mentioned the Old Testament. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18, Almighty God says, I shall raise them for profit from among thy brethren like unto thee, and I shall put my words into his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command. Many of the Christians say that this prophecy, it refers to Jesus Christ's peace be upon him. And when we ask them that how does this prophecy refer to Jesus Christ's peace be upon him, so they say, hear the prophecy says, I shall raise them for profit from among thy brethren like unto thee. The prophet to come should be like Moses, peace be upon him. And the similarities that they give between prophet Moses, peace be upon him, and prophet Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, are that both of them were Jews and both of them were messengers of God. If these two are the only similarities of fulfillment of prophecies, then all the prophets mentioned in the Bible after Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, they fulfill the prophecy. For example, Solomon, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Daniel, Joel, John the Baptist, all of them are Jews and all of them prophets of God. If these two are the only similarities of fulfillment of prophecy, then there are several prophets that are mentioned in the Bible that fulfill the prophecy. Thus, this prophecy does not befit anyone but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If we analyze Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, both of them, they had a mother and they had a father. Whereas Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he had a mother, whereas he did not have a father. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Ali Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 45, that he was born miraculously without any male intervention. A similar message is mentioned in the Bible. It is mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 1, verse number 18, and the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 1, verse number 35, that he was born miraculously without any male intervention. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was like Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, and Prophet Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was unlike Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. Furthermore, if you analyze, Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, both of them, they got married and they had children. Whereas Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he did not get married, nor did he have children. Furthermore, if you analyze, Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, both of them, they had a natural death. Whereas Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he did not have a natural death. It is mentioned in the glorious Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 157 and 158, that he was raised up alive. Many of the Christians, they argue that he was crucified. If I agree with the Christian for sake of argument that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was crucified, irrespective whether he was crucified or raised up alive, he did not die a natural death. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was like Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, and Prophet Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was unlike Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. Furthermore, if you analyze, Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, both of them, 
they were worldly kings. They could give punishment of life and death. They had that power. Whereas Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, it is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 18, verse number 36, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, My kingdom is not of this world. Furthermore, if you analyze Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, both of them, they brought a new law. Whereas Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he did not get a new law. He came to confirm the previous law. It is mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 and 18. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, Think not, I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have come not to destroy, but to fulfill. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was like Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, and Prophet Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was unlike Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. Furthermore, if we analyze, Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, both of them, they were accepted as prophets by the people as a whole. Whereas Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, it is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse number 11, that he was not accepted by the people as a whole. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was like Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, and Prophet Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was unlike Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. Furthermore, it is mentioned in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18, Almighty God says, I shall raise them for profit from among thy brethren like unto thee, and I shall put my words into his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command. The next verse, book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 19, it says, that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, and he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Some translations say that I will take revenge. So whosoever does not follow the prophet to come, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Almighty God will take revenge from those people. Further, it is mentioned in the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, verse number 12, that a book is revealed to thee, that he is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. And this is exactly what our beloved Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, man, I am I am not learned. And this is the fulfillment of the prophecy that is mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, verse number 12, which says, The book is revealed to thee, that he is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he's prophesied in the Old Testament, in the Song of Solomon's, chapter number 5, verse number 16. It says, Hikku Muhammad Takim, we kullu Muhammadim, zehdudi wa zehrai, bayna Jerusalem. His mouth is most sweet. He's altogether lovely. This is my beloved. This is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. In Hebrew, Im is added as respect. So if to Muhammad, Im is added, so it becomes Muhammadim. If to Elo, Im is added, so it becomes Elohim. Let's discuss Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Christian scriptures, in the New Testament. It's mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 157. الذين يتبعون الرسول النبي الأمي الذي يجدونه مكتوبا عندهم في التوراة والإنجيل. Those who follow the unlettered prophet whom they would find mentioned in the scriptures, in the law and in the gospel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 49, and Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 6. ورسولا إلى بني إسرائيل and a messenger to the children of Israel. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was only sent for the Bani Israel, only for the Jews. It is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 16. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, And I shall pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. It is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse number 26. It is mentioned, But when the comforter is come, whom I shall send unto you, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the comforter, he shall testify of me. It is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter shall not come. For if I depart, I shall send him unto you. Now the Comforter, if you analyze, in the original language, it is Paraclete, which means Comforter. And the other word is Paracletos, which means Praiseworthy. Irrespective, whether it's Paraclete or Paracletos, both the meanings befit the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Many of the Christians say that this refers to the Holy Spirit. 
Now, if we analyze the Holy Spirit, He was there before Jesus Christ, peace be upon Him, was born. He was there in the womb of Elizabeth. He was there when Jesus Christ, peace be upon Him, was born. He was there in the Feast of Pentecost. He was there when Jesus Christ, peace be upon Him, was baptized. So, this prophecy can surely not refer to the Holy Spirit, but refers to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. For even the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hears shall he speak. He shall glorify me. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. For even the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hears shall he speak. He shall glorify me. This prophecy again refers to no one but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And we know our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he spoke whatever was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as if the words were put into his mouth. So this prophecy befits no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We Muslims, we believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was the Messiah, translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. So, these prophecies, they befit no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. This was in brief regarding Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Christian scriptures. It was the tip of the iceberg. I would like to end my talk with a quotation from the glorious Quran, from Surah Kawthar, chapter number 108, verse number 1 to 3. Inna a'tayna kal kawthar. Verily, we have granted thee the abundance. Fasalli li rabbika wanhar. Then glorify thy Lord and praise Him. Inna shani akahu al abtar. Verily, who hath thee will be cut off from future hope. Wa akhru da'wana anil. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Jazakallah, Brother Farik, for the talk. Respected guests, brothers and sisters, before we disembark from this spectacular journey, let us remind ourselves of the history of Islam and the Prophets. We know that the Prophets were doubted, insulted, threatened, and persecuted, but their trust was sure in Allah. A few examples will help us revive our faith. The great exemplars of virtue conquered evil each according to his circumstances. Ibrahim alayhi salam embraced one to death without hesitation. Thus stood staunch in the fire of persecution unhurt. Ayyub alayhi salam was an embodiment of patient humility and taqwa. It was with these weapons that he fought and conquered evil. Nuh alayhi salam mission was to a wicked world, plunged in sins. His heart bleeds for his people, obstinate as they are. He survives the flood by his faith in the world of unbelief. Da'ud was a man of exceptional strength. He sought justice and sang Allah's praises. Ismail was true in constancy, amid temptations. In fact, assured the father to fulfill the word to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, an exemplary sacrifice. Sulaiman alayhi salam stands firmly by his principles and by wisdom subdues the refractory. Musa alayhi salam in his mission crimed over arrogant, wronged by his patience and faith. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was an epitome of wisdom and patience. The leader of leaders, in fact, remains the number one hero all times. We learn that evil must perish, despised and disgraced. The lives of the prophets are full of human vicissitudes. 
painting vivid colors with their spiritual implications, the most varied aspects of their lives. How much we have to learn from these exemplars of wisdom and patience, from these droll models of success.